All right, tonight we are playing a sweet deck called Five Color Green by Ricardo Barris. I found that on TC decks, like the other decks before. And yeah, it's a very sweet build with some unique cards like the Thornscape Apprentice, which can give a creature first strike for red mana plus tap or tap creatures for white mana. And in the core, you want to accelerate your mana in the first few turns to have strong three drops like Phyrex Indigator or Call of the Herd. In addition, I want to name Riverboa here because often you want to keep one green up to regenerate. So it's often a three drop for you. And besides that, you are playing very sweet cards of the complete color pile. You have some split cards like Wax and Wayne where you can pump a creature, plus two, plus two, or destroy enchantment. Um, this is very flexible to play in the format. And you have the split cards like Fire and Ice to get ahead in the game, have a cool two for one, or tap a thread away to get through with your negator. And besides that, you try to attack your opponent's mana with winter for winter orbs and a single Armageddon here. And what's a bit counterintuitive is for me is the playset Thoughts to Blow Shares. Because uh, I think often you want to raise your opponent and giving him life with the Thoughts to Blow Shares could backfire. Maybe in this uh, spot a Lightning Bolt would be cooler, but we will see. In the sideboard, we have a full playset of Engineered Plagues, which is a great card, and I think you can justify playing through uh, three to four, like in every deck, which can enable them. Playset of Naturalize, uh, probably mostly against decks like MOs, because Oath of Druids would give us problems. Um, three Sphere of Resistance, which is a uh, interesting call, I think a metagame call, because you do not have an acceleration like Mox Diamond. And if this is your two drop, in my opinion, you could find yourself locked out quite a few times. And a playset of Tempting Worm. That's a card when you, when it has a battlefield, your opponent may put any number of artifact, creatures, enchantments, and or lands from their hand onto the battlefield. So it's for pretty corner case against some control decks, I guess. Uh, what's completely missing in this build is uh, any discard spell. So I'm really interested how this will play out. All right, we are on the play here with a pretty decent hand. We got a two turn Phyrex Negator and some cards to clear the way for him to that's absolutely keep. We could brick a bit if he can handle the turn one Lana Elves, but I really want to try this. So turn one Lana Elves. I mean, if he can't handle the Lana Elf and the Negator, we have a pretty quick game here. This does not seem well for us. Okay, Goblin deck. I think I want to get down the Frex Indicator if he has turned to another mountain or land plus Gampheim Incinerator. We have to sacrifice one of our permanents. But besides that, we are in decent shape. The cool thing with Trample is that you can attack, wait for blocks, and after he decides how he wants to block, you can still play Swords of Plosures. And due to the trample damage, he will still get the damage. Okay, Goblin Pie Driver. We have to see that we are a bit stuck on white mana, but this solves the problem. And we will do exactly what I mentioned here. We attack with the Negator. Okay, no blocks. So the question is, do we still want to sort here to prevent 
him for ma making one mana. I think it's worth it. So sort in this. Then follow up is Winter Orb, which is pretty decent. So he could when go to three mana. Hort is not great in this pot because he needs to take two of his mana to bind one of ours. So probably Goblin Warchief here. This is fine due to the fact that we just untap one land a turn. So there is an argument now for uh, playing swords on this. But I don't think it's necessary at that point. I can wait on my turn and then decide on that. Okay, Gemstone Mine is not great. A bit too much mana here. I think I want to play a sword on this. And attack with both because it's not changing the clock. We still have a damage spell in hand. Wayne won't do anything in this matchup. And now he could have one mock fanatic. In this case, we can sacrifice a land. So no problem here. Armageddon, that's strong. Yeah, I think I want to go for Armageddon. We still have lethal then next turn. There's an argument for hiding that. But I don't want to get him to three mana again. So I think he has nothing that could happen to us if we play Armageddon. He could have Mock Fanatic in this case. We sacrifice a Winter Orb if he wants to ping. Okay, this was quick. Very quick. But Goblins is a scary deck to play against. Happy to bring in four Engineered Plagues here. And I think there's a small argument of uh, for Sphere of Resistance, but could backfire pretty badly. Fire Eyes is decent against the deck. We can really suffer from a Sharpshooter. Maybe the negator is not great, to be honest. Because if he brings in some amount of pyroclas uh, pyroclas and pyrokinesis, this will backfire pretty badly. And even with Gampheim Incinerator. I mean there's another argument for cutting down on Wax and Wayne, but this might be a cool combo combat trick. <laughs> That's not great. I think cutting four black mana, uh, four black cards with converted mana cost three against four other, which have a way higher impact, is great. And I really want to start the game like this. Window op was decent. That's a great. Uh, starting hand. If he has turn one lackey, we have the sword suppliers for that. If he has no lackey, we can go with Quirion Ranger and hope for having a two for one with the fire eyes here. Okay, here's a mock fanatic. In that case, I will just do a follow up Quirion Ranger. I'm not sad if this gets traded against the mock fanatic. I'm even tempted to block the Mock Fanatic if he attacks. Because we have no way to get value of the Quirion Ranger right now. Because we have each land drop. Gampam Incinerator, it's decent. It's not a great spot where a Goblin wants to be. I mean, if this would have been a uh, Goblin Lackey and we do not have removal for that. Okay, Winter Orb, decent. I think it might be time for Winter Orb now. Not sure. 
want to play the city of brass and next turn if his play is just to so if he skips his turn without using his mana i'm tempted to play ice on that and then deploy call of the herd to get ahead in the game okay the war chief is a great one I think it does not get much better than playing swords to plowshares on a goblin war chief. Because that's a spell, if he hits the battlefield and has no follow up, it didn't have any impact. So this is fine. Next turn, I want to play Call of the Herd. Ah, this is great. And even Winter Orb is strong. So my follow-up next turn. I need to see what his play is, but we have plenty of room here. The elephants will really stabilize the game. Because he need a combination of goblins, a Gampam incinerator or mock fanatic, and we can play fire in response. So I'm pretty confident here. Okay, he goes for the tap. Um, I float a blue mana, cause it will do damage anyway. Mm, green mana, but I don't think I want to use any of this. Still want to have the fire and ice and playing winter orb has a huge impact now. I think I want to play it with Undiscovered Paradise because I just can untap one land only. He needs exactly green mana plus naturalize and I want to attack here. Not scared of any two mana goblin at that point. And I think in this pace I, I want him to extend another one toughness goblin to the board. Okay. Um, I want to untap. forest here so green tells me um, and him not playing anything probably means that he has a naturalize for the winter orb which i'm fine with so my play is to attack with the elephant again Okay, I want to ship the turn here because I want to keep fire up if he destroys the winter orb what we what he will do now and to prevent a turn like goblin war chief goblin lackey and then attack next turn it's okay for me we have the winter orb again and if he wants to port he needs to keep four mana up Okay, this will find probably a ringleader, which would have the highest impact. Greatest thing for us that could happen would him getting Gempheim Incinerator and then um, yeah, tutoring up. Would be fine for me to see him um, cycling Gampheim Incinerator.
So am I willing to play into a Gampalm Incinerator in his hand to use my mana better? I think I am. It's just good to keep his Goblin Count low and even if he cycles one in response, I'm fine with that. Means he can't port us. Yeah, Gampalm Incinerator as we called. But otherwise it wouldn't change the mess. So he would change, uh, he would cycle, we would play fire in response and he could sacrifice to make damage. Would be three damage anyway. Okay. I have five mana, so I think call of the herd plus uh, Lanova Elves is the right thing to do here. If there's an argument for River Boa, but I think it's more mana efficient to play it like this. But the ringleader is hard to handle for us because we don't have any way to make card advantage right now and if this finds two or more goblins we are in trouble so we found Goblin Lackey and Goblin Ringleader. We really need some sort of indirection now. If he attacks, I will block because I am fine with trading uh, one elephant for two of his creatures. This could be fine. I mean, River Boa is pretty cool, but I'm not in the position here to attack. It's nice that we have a combat trick here, but we are really in trouble. At this point, I think we need a combination of two um, engineered plagues, and we are really in trouble due to the Rishaden ports, which can just tap the City of Brass to make damage. Goblin Metron, probably on a card like Gampam Incinerator or Goblin Warchief. Gampam Incinerator, okay. So let's see. If he cycles. So he cycles. And the question is, do we want to trade Wax against Mock Fanatic. So he will make four damage anyway, and then he can sacrifice a Mock. I think I want to do this, because then we can block with a River Boa, and we are not in a spot where he will just force us to regenerate. Okay, this is too much land. I try for one more turn cycle here, but I'm not confident about this. I mean, even if we get an engineered plague, we are not ahead in the game because he can port our city each turn and has a ringleader. Okay, Goblin Warchief plus ringleader. This is enough for me. This was too much land, really too much land.
But in this game, you saw how scary the um, negator would have been if we have a negator. And I'm not sure if I want to play Tempting Worm. It does not seem tempting. I mean, there was a spot where it would have been better than Wax and Wayne. I really want to give it a try, even if it could backfire, but Wax and Wayne is pretty decent. So I try to play this again like this and really hope to find some combination of engineered plagues now. Okay, this is fine, because we got the interaction. I want to keep this. Curian Ranger is not great, but it's a potential blocker for um, Goblin Lackey. So I'm not unhappy about this. Depending on his Turn one play, we might drop River Boa next turn, but I don't think it's great because. Okay, Lecky here. This is nice. I just want to ship the turn here because if he has a removal spell, if he does not have a removal spell for the Ranger, I might block. If he wants to cycle, I will play probably Waxwain. The combination of two Undiscovered Paradise is pretty awkward. Okay, this is great. So we really got a turn from our... We got a two for one for, for our Engineered Plague, even if he can handle it exactly next turn. Forest would have been fine, but this is a lot of Undiscovered Paradise. So... First plague. I don't know why is this not work to float mana before. Okay. Name goblin. And I want to attack now. He could have a goblin war chief as a follow up. But I would be fine with that. To take one damage and then play a sword on this. Yeah, two undiscovered paradise is a lot. Okay, no port. So he has a naturalize for this, which we can't prevent. City is okay-ish. Because mm, he is forced to go for the engineered plague now. And our follow-up will be to have a river bower in play, which he needs to handle immediately, otherwise. This is a pr pretty decent blocker. And we have three more plagues left, plus winter orbs. Okay. Goblin Lecky plus Gamper Incinerator would be strong. Okay, Warchief. If he attacks, I will block. Another plague, okay. Not sure if I want to drop it now. I think we need to handle this one with the swords to plowshares. Then play another Quirion Ranger. And we are shipping damage in here because if he has some hasty creature to attack we still have the combat trick with vex so he could have a combination of goblin warchief plus goblin lackey but then he can't 
Get rid of the Quirin Ranger. This is good. Because it even survives the Engineered Plague. Hit four very good cards. Two War Chiefs, one Matron, one Siege Gang Commander. This will be tough for us. Okay, he attacks here. I think I want to use the opportunity to block and play Vex. Um, this prevents me from landing a Plague next turn plus keeping regeneration up. But I think it's fine. -ish. Call of the Herd is decent, but we will see a combination of War Chiefs. Okay, I just hope he slams a Siege Gang Commander. And then we have a shot with. Engineered Plague as a follow-up. But it will be tough. Seven cards in hand with plenty of them being two or three or four for ones. Don't know. The, the mana does not function right here. I tap three mana, just have to impool. Let's get green here. Gets a call down. I think we are the aggressor here. So we can't have the ability to land a undiscover, uh, uh, another call of the herd from graveyard next turn. But he's in trouble. Watch if okay. Hopefully he plays a creature with one toughness. Yeah, that's great. So he does not have mana up for port. And uh, he might be forced to block. This is a pretty awkward top deck. Okay, Engineered Plague. And this is exactly the reason you play four of these. So it's a one for one for now. Naming Goblin. We attack for five, six, seven. He's forced to block, but he can block the river boar. Ah, yeah, this is a great position to be in. I think he has to block the elephant token, but he might go for the river boar. And if he just have naturalized now, we kill him next turn. Goblin Metron plus, ah, no, this won't save him due to the engineered plague. Yeah, let's see if here's something going. No, but a great match, very, very cool. Yes, yeah, thanks for watching. All right, that was a fun match. I mean, we saw the raw power of Phyrexian Negator and Engineered Plague, so it's uh, hard to tell how much the rest of the deck would have done. Um, it was a pretty close game, but I really like the idea of the deck in general. It's a bit like the five-color white decks, which are relying on the white weenie core and splashing Enlightening Tutor, uh, uh, so Enlightening Tutor on the main deck and splashing enchantments and artifacts, um, plus fire and ice. And I think it's a cool idea. Um, I, you might stumble versus some decks, but um, loving the idea to explore more cards like the Swanscape Apprentice again. Because combined with the Quirin Ranger, you have the ability to tap two creatures a turn. And uh, this is a great combination with the Phyrexian Negator. And I played a lot against Whipcorder in the format, and this card gives us nightmares. 
I'm not sure if I'm a fan of the Tempting Worm. Maybe we could try something like Exalted Angel. But uh, I saw the deck for the first time and I think there is pretty uh, more space to explore it. And I um, would be really interested in your opinion on the deck. Um, what are your ideas? How do you like it? Please leave a comment and see you next time.